Hey everyone, JD here. Welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to be working on this old wooden box. Now, uh, what is it? Well, it's actually a foot locker for a scout camp my father made for me over 40 years ago. So it saw many seasons of use and um, it was sent back to me. Let's just say it has a lot of patina. You know, it's been sitting in storage a long time um, in fairly decent shape but not the best. So I decided I wanted to repurpose it for my own storage area by sanding it down, giving it some new stain, uh, wire wheeling the hardware on it, maybe give it a fresh coat of paint, and polyurethane it. Also, adding caster wheels to it. I've got four caster wheels. That'll help it roll around in my storage uh, room and be able to fit under some metal shelves. So I'll give you a look at it. There's some nice wood burning designs here my father did. You know, it's fairly heavy duty. Works well, there's a tray in there. You can see that. And the interior is not too bad. What I tried to do was find a stain that kind of resembles what originally was there to make things easier and I found this it's called gun stock it's an old cowboy gun so the inside's not too bad I'm not really going to be sanding that down probably just give it a coat of polyurethane but the hardware's got to come off and the lid's got to come off and then while I get to work on that you don't need to see that it just screws uh, we'll get it outside because I really don't want all the sanding dust in here. So once I get that done, we'll meet you outside. I'm not going with a heavy grit sandpaper or something in the light to medium range. I don't want to tear it up. I just want to recondition it. And uh, before I start, I'm definitely going to wear this dust mask. You don't want to be breathing in this stuff and hearing protection. I enjoy music, I enjoy making music, so I don't want to lose my hearing. And there's two types of hearing protection you can use. One's the big earmuff type, and these are the plug type. I prefer these because they stay out of the way. So without further ado, let's do. Oh, and eye protection. I'm just gonna use these reading glasses. That should be enough for this. Right away, I can see it's doing a really nice job of resurfacing this. So, watching me sand the rest of this would be like watching paint dry. So, we'll get back to you once we get it done. Now, what I found with this is that I think you could sand nearly half the distance to China and still have stains. So, this is not going to be without character. It's going to have a lot of character. It's going to have a lot of patina. But now it's time to lay on some stain. Try to stay out of the way when I do it. Try not to be too clumsy. I bought a bigger brush, but it doesn't fit the can. That wasn't very smart. So start laying on some steam. And I'm sure there's uh, master woodworkers out there who would clean out everything I'm doing wrong by doing it this way, but. Not a Smithsonian restoration. It's a refresh, and uh, I feel good about it. I'm trying to spread it out so it's a little bit translucent. Get some of that nice wood green coming through. 
just going to continue like that until we get it done. All right, I wasn't going to film this, but uh, tonight just got done some polyurethaneing. I want to do the bottom of the box inside of the uh, tray that's original stain and the inside of the lid, even though there's paint spilled on there, that's just what it is. So I want to do the inside and it really drank it up. We're going to need another coat on the inside for sure. So while it was kicked up on end, I decided to put the first coat on the outside as well. And uh, I'm working after work at night to get it done. So, um, there's the progress. All right, so we're here with the hardware, attempting to clean it up. You'll notice I have most of the nuts and bolts and things like that um, attached to this magnet so I don't lose them. And I just kept these bolts and nuts on the clasp. I've already taken these off here. And I want to clean it up. And I have a method that I hope works. And a lot of people know about it. But there's a lot of people that don't. So I want to try it here. And that's the use of this fine steel wool. Or grade zero steel wool. I'm going to set this aside and use this. This is the Harbor Freight version, the extra fine. And I think this one's probably nicer, but I'll save that for detail work like chrome and all that. This is pretty good. And basically what you do is you just kind of like a magic eraser, kind of rub chrome or metal. And it's supposed to clean up oxidation and rust and things like that, so I'm going to give that a try. I don't expect it to be perfect, just nicer. I think that's already nicer. Now, if you look at the back after 40 years, that's the coating. It's still there, that kind of zinc coating. And if I was to wire wheel it, I would most certainly scratch, scratch through it and uh, mess up the finish. And then probably have to paint it. So I'm trying to do this to avoid more work later. And see how it works. And just in a few seconds, it's really doing a great job bringing up that oxidation. As for these hinges, I don't mind taking a wire wheel to them because they're pretty crusty. Surface wise, but I'll give the steel wool a test here. If you can remove most of it. I mean, if I can remove this rust with the steel wool, I'm still going to probably paint it with a silver paint, but we'll see how that turns out. That's actually turning out not half bad. It is erasing a lot of the rust. Like I say, in just a few seconds. Now, the clasp for the lock originally looked like that. It looked like brass, but it's not. It's actually a kind of a brass color coating on the steel. That's pretty far gone. I'm probably going to wire wheel that and just hit it with some gold paint to keep it like it originally was, but you know, I'll try to clean most of that off using this method. And then a lot of these bolts and all that, I'll probably wire wheel the threads a little bit. But that's it. I'll get to this. And hopefully it turns out good. All right, sorry about that, folks. On the playback, I just realized that I successfully cut out this uh, hinge um, from being able to see what the steel wool does. So we'll take this nasty section and keep it in frame this time so you can actually see it. Now that looked pretty bad. That's a lot of rust as I hit the tripod and jiggle it around. But that removed an awful lot just in a few seconds there. So just to give you a chance to see that. And uh, all right, we'll move on. All right, there's something I forgot to mention that I want to mention that I think is pretty important. When you're working with this steel wool, 
Make sure you have a good dedicated space to do it. Don't have any power tools around or electronics because it gives off a whole lot of this micro steel debris that breaks off of the steel wool when you're polishing. So you want to have an area that you can contain it. There's different ways you could get it with a, a vacuum. You could wipe it up, but uh, I'm going to use a magnet. And uh, the magnet that I'm going to use is one of these door or door or window sensors for an alarm system. When they put the new alarm system on this place, they pulled these off for the trash. And I kept them because they have magnets in them. And I like to stick them up on a shelf, metal shelf in the garage. And you can just stick nuts and bolts to them. But I took one and I'm going to show you what happens when a magnet gets nearby. So I'm going to use this to clean the workbench. But look at that. That's a good effective way to clean up this little steel dust so it doesn't get everywhere, especially it doesn't get into electronics and electric motors. Look at that. That did quite a nice job, so it keeps some magnets around. All right. All right, time to get these caster wheels uh, located and mounted on the bottom. Don't worry if my face is out of frame. I don't really need to be in frame for this. Um, this is the original stain on the underside of this. And all I do is polyurethane it. So I got this project started last weekend. We're now into the second weekend where I'm going to finish it. So during the work week after work, I went ahead and did polyurethane, which you don't really need to see. It's pretty straightforward, just brush it on. Some areas drank up the polyurethane and needed more coats, while others did pretty well without doing that. I put extra on this bottom lip, but the bottom uh, floor actually only took the two coats. It's in pretty good shape. Now I never noticed as a little boy that the floor was recessed because I never looked at the bottom. So it was a pretty good idea to keep the bottom from getting uh, banged up. Uh, so there's a lip, and I noticed something else my father did was he beefed it up with some quarter round to just miter cut the corners. Pretty inexpensive, pretty cheap way to do it. And brad nails and wood glue, but it gives it a nice decorative touch too. It's a nice detail. But because of that lip, you can't just put these caster wheels anywhere. Because if you did, when you run it all the way in, it's going to bind and foul on the edge. So to avoid that, I kind of measured how far this wheel is. And it's, it's under two inches, probably between an inch and three quarter and two inches. So I decided two inches from the corner would be the proper measurement. So what I did was I... 2 plus 2 is 4, so we made a 4 inch square of cardboard. And I just scribe uh, 2 inches. I uh, make a cross to find the center. And I'm going to use that as a template, which I think will work pretty good. So, what I'm going to do is hold that up and use this little punch just to put a little mark there. Now, these caster wheels are. 5 16 so I got a 5 16 drill bit I'm going to put it in another interesting thing that I noticed on these caster wheels is it kind of has a stop sign shape on this round part and the only thing I can figure is it's so when you're screwing it in you have something to grab until it starts to tighten and grab for itself you sure wouldn't get a wrench in there in that tiny little space but anyway there's my hole I'm going to drill a hole and test this. But before I do that, let me just eyeball it and see how it looks. It looks pretty good. I like to eyeball it before I start cutting and drilling because sometimes all the great measurements that you do, you find out you didn't double something or you doubled something that you shouldn't have and you don't want to find that out after you cut everything and drill everything. So 
I'm confident that's going to be pretty good, but we're going to test it out anyway. like it's going to be a good fit. So I've got a washer on the back that goes on first, then a lock washer, and then a 5 16 nut. So I'm just going to sneak on in here and go ahead and just put them on there for a test fit. I'm going to go in there and clean out some of these splinters in a bit. But let me just mount it up. It seems to work pretty good. So now all I have to do, since I have a template that works, is just go around all the other three corners, mark them, drill them, and mount the rest of these uh, wheels. All right, well, that went pretty well. The other four, the other three actually went on pretty well. I tightened them with uh, a socket, and um, only one gave me a little bit of problem where I had to put some pliers on that um, hex sheet before it got started, but now we have a roller. And it's just so nice. That's exactly what I want. So the next step is going to be to mount the hinges on the uh, top door and the latch. But I've already put the latch on and on the lid. So the plan is I'm going to mount the hinges onto the lid first. And then mount it to the box. That way I'm not flopping around with the lid trying to get that threaded. So that's next. All right, the uh, hinges are back on. The door opens and closes good. One thing, uh, so the, this hinge right here was bent, but there's a reason for that. I put it back exactly the way it was and the door works fine. Another thing I wanted to point out was, you'll see some discoloration on the, uh, the paint job I did on the hinge, the silver hinge. And the reason is because when I put the silver on, it looked too new and too slick. So while the paint was still a little bit tacky, I laid some clear coat on there, which reacted with the silver to kind of simulate a fresh galvanized look. And it came out the way I wanted it. Might not be for everyone, but it's the way I liked it. Some people might wonder why I didn't paint the hinges the same gold color as the latch. And that's because that's the way it was. That's the way it was originally. And I try to put it back to the way I remember it. The only thing left now to do is put in the tray. All right, yeah, like I say, I'm happy with it. It didn't come out half bad. Last thing to do is put in the tray. And what I did with the tray was, it's already had a two-tone stain originally. All I did was just clean it up. I didn't sand it, just polyurethaned it. And that's the inside. So I think it looks pretty good. Now we're just going to put it inside the tracks. That slides around like that. Give the lid a little close. Rolls with ease. And you know, I'm happy with it. I'm really happy that it's a survivor and I can repurpose it to use in my own storage area and even pass it down to my own kids. The most satisfying thing about it though is that my father made this for me over 40 years ago and it still exists and it's gonna get a new life. Thanks for stopping by the workshop. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and share. It helps the channel out and it's free. And until next time, get your hands on a project, get to work on something, behave yourselves, and we'll see you next time.